Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. We are still in the first week of the month of September. And listen, if you've been following us since Monday, you would know that, listen, God, I come in that bradish. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, when God says, pray for mercy, Pray for mercy. This month, ask for God's mercy. I, I, I'm, I'm spending this time teaching you how to understand the operation of God's mercy. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? And remember, increase on your mind. Yes, increase, increase, increase. Praise God. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread from you. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. Now then. Psalm 119 and verse 64. Psalm 119 and verse 64. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Let me understand the way this thing operates. If I can only understand it, I'll enjoy the mercy of God. Praise God. Oh, glory. I'll enjoy it. Now, I was telling yesterday about Adam and Eve and how they broke that hedge of mercy that God created. Now, what was the hedge of mercy? They were living in God's provision. They were living in God's protection. Think about it. They were doing so well. They, they didn't have to stress themselves. They didn't have to labor. No. Now, you see, God did that and he had set the, 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 the foundation of how life is supposed to be. They were never supposed to go hunt for food themselves. Ima I can just imagine then, you know, imagine how they want to eat meat and meat will just show up. They didn't have to get a gun and go hunting or a spare and go hunting in the bush and ah God has already said these animals they are for your food so so I come in a bracket ishkata but Satan looked at all that he looked at how how they were so blessed and he said nah 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 let's disrupt this thing it can't be this good for man let's disrupt it and he stepped in caused them to break the edge and now God showed up and then they hid themselves. God didn't come up like a terror. Ah, Adam, I caught you. I saw you. No, God came like every other time. And, hey, where are you? Oh, we heard you coming. And we hid ourselves. How did they hear God come? Ah, he announces himself. You remember when Moses asked, I want to see your face. God said, nah, you can't see that leave. And God said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pass by and then I'm going to hide you within a cliff. And then stay there, I'll hide you then. I'll cause you to see my back. And Moses said, okay, that's good enough for me. All right. <laughs> and again, God passed. What, what did Moses say? He saw nothing. But what happened? The Lord... He kept announcing his name and announcing his name. That's how he comes. He comes in a Bless the Lord of my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. The glory of God is just awesome. His glory is awesome. If you've ever experienced the glory of God, it will shut your mouth because there is nothing in this world you can use to compare with that glory. Nothing. Nothing. So when he was approaching Adam and Eve, that's what they heard. They heard him coming. Ah, now nah, do we stand him? They went to hide and he actually stood there and was like, where are you guys? I said, we heard you. And we hid ourselves because we are naked. Who told you naked? 
Because now you are exposed to this word. For you to be exposed to this word, you must have broken the edge. Have you eaten? That was the edge. That was the edge. Have you eaten? Some of you communicate to God today and God is saying the same thing. Who told you broke? Who told you sickness? Oh Lord, I have whatever you want to call it. God says, who told you? Have you broken the hedge? I remember... <clears throat> Many years ago, I had escorted a friend of mine that came to visit me. And she was traveling. So we got to the park. And while she sat in the car, I said, let's pray. So I held her hands. And the moment I opened my mouth, words just poured out of my mouth. And I heard myself specifically praying in a certain way, speaking some definite words, very short, clear words. And I released them. Then, so I was like, wow, that was sweet. You see, when, when something had transpired, okay? So I was like, Lord, what was that all about? And then he said to me, he said, from henceforth, Anytime you are traveling or you are praying for someone that is traveling, you will pray like that. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, what was that? That was an hedge of protection. He was putting around me and around everyone that I cover in terms of journey and trip. Now, before he would say that to you, he must have seen that the enemy is plotting or planning something. You know, sometimes you don't understand. We fly, take off land, and everything's fine. We, we go on road journeys, everything is fine. You, you, no attack, nothing. Nothing. You don't understand what happens behind the scene. You don't know. I'm not even saying this to scare you. I'm just telling you that God protects us. Okay. So I began to practice that. Anytime I'm traveling, you know, I, I tell, I pray that prayer. I use those same words for many years and I still do that today. It doesn't get old. Praise <laughs> God. So there was this day we're traveling and somehow, I wasn't the one driving, someone else was driving. I've now, I've had just two accidents in my life and those two accidents, the car was somersaulted. And the first time, now, when, when I saw everything that happened, the driver was driving, I saw um, a car was trying to overtake a tanker. And you know how the road was narrow. He miscalculated. And this driver had, you know, the, the options were very slim. There was a ditch here. Go into the car or get into the ditch. So in his bid to see how he can navigate, get to the very edge, and come back to the road. He's coming back to the road. He overturns the steering. And you know what that, that means? And trying to regain control and all that. The car began to somersault. Now, the moment I saw him going off, I quickly activated the safety measure in my heart. Now, you see, before all these things happen, I, I, please, I want you to understand what I'm sharing with you. Before all these things happened, I had taken time many, many years ago. I was still a student in, in the university there. I had taken time to contemplate on what can kill me in this life. I'm telling you the truth. I can take you to the spot in my school there, Namadu Bello University in Zaria. I can take you to the very spot where I said I cannot die. I can take you to that spot. Now, I didn't just stand there and say, I cannot die. No. It took me time. 
I, I, I've been meditating on this thing and, and, and asking myself, how well do you believe God? How well do you believe God? And, and I remember that day, it was in the night. I was going home from school because I was staying off campus then. I was going home from school and then I got to the, if you know, if you know um, Ebi Uzaria from the main gates, the first roundabout, you meet a fountain, okay? So I was going home, I was through, I was to go through the main gate and I, I walked meditating on this thing and I got to the gate and I told myself, look, you need to finish this. You need to settle this thing now, today. So I turned from the main gate and I, I walked back to school and got to the fountain. Then I turned. I, I must have done the gate and that fountain back and forth. Now, I don't know, someone would have wondered, what is this guy confused? I, this was in the night. I must have done that back and forth more than six times. Because each time I get to the gate, I'll tell myself, no, I'm not ready to go home yet. We must deal with this thing. And I'll ask myself, Atubo George, can you die? Do you believe? Now, I have been reading everything Jesus said about those who believe in him. Okay? And now I'm like, did he lie or was he not talking to me? And I'll, I'll, I'll go and I'll get to the gate and like, I don't believe this thing yet. I'll turn back. I'll say, Lord Jesus, what you said, did you mean it this way? Or how did the translators make a mistake? Now, what was I looking for? It's clear in black and white, everything he said. What was I looking for? I was waiting for a confirmation from him. This is what happens when we spend time in prayer. Someone can be there. Kapushaka, katabera, afatai, komena. And then your mind is on one thing. Until that thing comes. Sometimes you may get tired and it doesn't come. You leave it. Come another day. Come another day. But that day, I, I was going back and forth, going back and forth. Then, at some point, I was heading towards the gate. Close, close to the fountain now. I turned going towards the gate. Like... <laughs> Like something hit my heart. See, you will never understand until you experience some of these things. But see, there's a responsibility on your part. Something hit my heart. I felt it. It hit me. Boom. Then I screamed that night. I will never die. I said it. I, didn't, it, I wasn't myself. <laughs> was, I, I don't, and I, sincerely speaking, I can't even remember who was around me. No known person, of course, but you know how people, they are like, ah, oh God, are you okay? <laughs> I said it. It shook my whole body. Something happened that day. Because I thought of every scenario, accident, gunshot, I thought of Everything I was asking myself, if you are alive face to face with this situation, what would you do? Would you believe Jesus? Those are the things I was thinking about. Then when that thing happened, I knew. It, 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 something entered me. You know, like we'll say, <laughs> I know it was the word of God that hit my heart. And after that, I went home. I, I, it was settled. It was settled. Every fear, that's what I think. Every fear of death. <laughs> now I told myself I can face anything without fear. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. I remember after the, you know, that's after that, you know, one day, ooh, you know, all this religious crisis, and we had this situation of these, these guys, you know, I was with some sisters, we're walking, and then these guys just attacked us. And, <laughs> and I looked at the sisters, like, I have to protect them. 
and I went for the guy with a punch. As I was punching the, the main person, I told them, run. And they ran. I punched that guy. <laughs> now, why did I do that? That's the wisdom that came to me. The others were too shocked to see their leader drop. <laughs> and then they ran. And then I took the other way. And that's how we, we, we saved ourselves. Now, why was it I scared? Like, uh, something was working on me. So the same thing back to this accident. And every moment of that accident was very clear in my mind. Even when the car started some assaulting. Now, like I said, the moment I saw he had lost control, I somehow, I can't explain how I did it, but I can tell you, I activate that life within me. And I knew I would not lose my, lose my life. I knew the driver would not lose his life. I knew. No, never. Every second that car was assaulted, my mind was intact. I was just waiting for it to stop. And then when it stopped, I called the driver's name. He answered and I said, let's get out of here. We opened the door and we came out and we started. By the time people came to like, ah, check, check. There are people, there are people in the car. There are people there. They were trying to, I said, hey, we are the people in the car. They looked at us like, ah, hey, that go do. Now, after that incident, I was like, but Lord, how did that happen? It's not supposed to happen. I was not supposed to be involved in an accident. And then the Lord reminded me. I told you to pray that prayer. See, come see. David said, the earth is full of God's mercy. Teach me your statutes. And the Lord reminded me when we we're about to set out on that trip. He reminded me when I was supposed to pray that prayer. And I didn't because I got distracted. By he reminded me. I knew it. I remember the very spot. That's why I want to say, look, when you face God, you yourself will tell him, God, you're righteous. Just leave the matter. Now, here was I trying to attack him. Like, how, how would that ever happen? The second time, the same thing. Second accident. I, I, the same time, I was not driving. Someone else was driving. Where were pastors in the car? Thank God no one was um, no one was hurt. No loss of life. We came out also. I, like, the same experience. I'm like, Lord, second time? What's going on? And the Lord reminded me the same thing. I remember the spot where it came to my spirit to pray. Guess what? Immediately after that, when I got home, because throughout the whole going, you know, went to the hospital just to be sure everything is okay. And then when I got to my wife, I said to her, I said, you know what? From henceforth, anytime I'm embarking on a journey, you are the last person I'm going to call. And the reason I'm calling you it's not just to say bye. It's so that you will ask me or we pray together. If you ask me, have you prayed? Yes. Okay, fine. Or let's pray together. To make it safer, let's pray together. He said, yes. I said, I'm telling you to create my own shield. Are you getting what I'm saying? From the, um, you know, God has planted his hedge around me. But then up so that we don't break it. The saving grace then was that there is... A falcon, the, the, the truth of understanding in me. That's what saved me. Now, this is the same thing. Now, when you hear a pastor died in an accident, you wonder, how come? You hear, this man preaches truth. This man preaches the revelation of God. How come? Yeah. Every man is giving his hedge. Is the hedge around him. Satan can manipulate your mind into break them. But you see, that's why you must go beyond the hedge to understand the statutes of God. The understanding of God's statutes, I call me now, puts layers and layers of hedge around you. So even if Satan breaks one, you know how to quickly activate the other one for your own protection, brothers and sisters. David said, teach me, teach me your status. Teach me your status. Teach me, teach me, teach me. No man, no, no, I, I've just told you something. Now, the Lord didn't say, Every of my children should pray like this. He told me 
Now, he didn't tell me. I was not praying. I was not fasting. I was escorting someone. He gave me the words. Then he instructed me on it. If I make the mistake of breaking that, if I don't pray that prayer when I'm traveling, I have broken his command. See? So somebody can be, oh, Lord, I broke your command. Say, which sin did he commit? No, you grow to the point that the commands can be financial commands. Yeah. And suddenly you're getting broke. You don't understand why. Check the edge. Why? Because the earth is full of God's mercy. Praise God. My time is up. I'm trusting the Lord to, to do some extended kind of teaching. And let's see how the Lord's going to help us this month concerning that. I'll let you know when I get a clearance from the Lord. God bless you. Bye.